Hello YouTube, this is Carrot Kicks bringing you another PGA Tour 2K23 tutorial video. This is a unique video in that I don't necessarily say you must or should or need to do this in any way. This is a, a special little tutorial on dealing with the swing differences between 2K21 and PGA Tour 2K23. A trick I use to always hit 100% or 101 power instead of 102% or having to adjust to becoming much more precise at being quicker in your transition between the downswing and the upswing. It also has some unintentional benefits, though in reality it doesn't make too much of a difference. I will also be covering tricks in how to deal with the short game partials. I will explain why partials are so difficult, especially lower percentage partials, how to use the methods I mentioned earlier to combat those issues, and compensating for your swing path. Let's get into it. And if you wouldn't mind, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel greatly. But first, let's talk about the transition period in 2K23. Compared to PTA Tour 2K21, the tempo feels quicker to me. Maybe it's because of how quick it goes from 100% immediately in the white to already gray and 102. The window is definitely tighter this year on getting that exact power that you want. But in exchange, you get a much larger gray than in 2K21. Watch what happens when I pull back on my biggest transition club, my lob wedge. I've turned on the swing meter just to illustrate these things. Look how large the power meter is, but barely the white isn't that much greater than let's pull out our driver. As you can see, it's hard to hit that little white spot, right? And if I switch back to my lob wedge, even though this is a lot bigger with I think I have around 60 transition on my driver versus um, 95 or so on my lob wedge. It's almost as hard to hit the white power. It's very difficult to hit that perfect power, that 100% power. I'm almost always going to be over it. It's really tough to get it. They increase the gray overswing from 1% over to 2% over, making it very easy to hit 102% instead of the long pause we had in 2K21, where you could hold for about a quarter of a second longer before it actually started to overpower from 101 to 102 to 103, 104, 105. I've struggled with this in 2K23 and was just starting to just live with it, live with the fact that I'm always going to get 102% because it was comfortable for me. Until Lindsey Collins, aka Materializations, the number one player in the world, I've mentioned him before in my previous videos, he talked to me about a technique that I now use. I refined that technique because he had a different way of doing it and I made it a little better. So now I'm going to show you. So first, we're going to take a swing or two. We're going to go for, you know, my normal swing. What I normally do, I'm going to try to look away from my swing meter because it gets distracting. Um, but the window is very, very tight for 100%. So let's see what we get normally. One on one. One on one. One on one. So on my higher transition club, it's a little easier to hit one on one. What about the driver? One on two. Now I'm not really focused on timing right now, but one on one. It's very hard to hit that 100%, right? And I'm either going to get one on one or one on two. And uh, when I'm in the heat of the round, I generally get more 102s and even creeps into the overswing very quickly, as you can tell right there. Um, 
And the window starts shrinking, right? The window is very tight for 100% and I stopped trying to go for it. It was not worth going for it and sometimes I would get 98%, 99%, 100%, 101, 102. All of those I would get somewhere in that range and it made distance calculation a bit annoying because the difference between 98 and 102 is as little as four yards on your long on your shorter clubs but as much as uh 12 yards on your on your longer clubs 15 yards five percent five percent difference is is a big deal so i went for 102 consistently just to just to get it 101 102. That is until Lindsay told me a trick to hit more perfects, he said. I was like, oh, more perfects, you say? I'm intrigued. Let me try this. It was something we did in 2K21, not all the time, uh, because we didn't need to. But let's look over to the power meter, right? We're at 100%. Let's pull back. 98%. Okay, now we're going to take a couple swings. 101. 101. 101. A lot of perfects too, right? 100. 101. This method meant I was always going to go into the gray over the bar and have a slightly more consistent power and tempo for me so technically you can get multiple perfect points on ps5 wired controller as i showed you using this method something that we you we had in 2k21 when the power or the perfect window was larger so what is happening when we underpower our shot intentionally and then overshoot it why am I getting 100% or 101 all the time? Let's get to the details. I've talked about pulling points before in my previous videos, especially the calibration video you can see on my channel. I'll put the link in the description, but I'll go over them very briefly. These are the places you can hit on the timing meter on the right um, that determine if you're fast, perfect, or slow. Um, they are set points on the meter. Uh, calibration will shift them as I discussed in that video uh, to make it more suited for your swing but they are mostly limited by the platform you play on PC for instance has far more pulling points for some reason no matter whether you play wireless or wired whether you play on Bluetooth or not uh, for PS4 and PS5 and Xbox is uh, the same wireless or wired so don't worry about that too much and it, it's determined by what percent power you hit as well as just your calibration. Lower power than 100% slows down the tempo. The calibration pulling points, whatever you have it set to, shift to the left. So when I hit that left-sided perfect, right? There's our left-sided perfect. That's actually our middle perfect. Because we underpowered, it got shifted. Normally when I hit a 101%, 102% with 100% intent, our perfect is going to be right in the middle. There. And that's the only perfect I can hit with 101% power, 102% power, whatever. 100% intent. So when I shift it down to 98%, that perfect middle point goes to the left side of perfect, and my first gray slow goes to the right side of perfect, shifting ever so slightly left. The overswing goes down to around 101% as I demonstrated. Uh, you have to get into true overswing, overpowering, before you go to 102, 103, 104. And 101 is the baseline, the highest the gray will go. So, on PS5, we get extra perfects doing it this way. Though your misses are going to be slightly worse than just playing normal tempo, normal 100% intent shots. I like it because it slows down the swing speed just a little. 
and gives me a slightly bigger of a window to let me hit a consistent 100% or 101%. And if I need to overpower like a drive on a long par 5 into the wind, I will play 100% intent because I want to try to get the most power that I could possibly get. So that's the main reason I do this technique. It's comfort. It feels good to me. There might be a tiny, 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 tiny little benefit to having this extra perfect, but I believe it's negligible since a very tiny gray slow and gray fast are not that impactful. But it helps us understand what happens when we partial a shot. So let's move on to that topic and what I think will be the most beneficial in this conversation of me showing you this. You will mostly partial on chips, pitches, splash, and flops. Maybe you might do it on a full shot, right? Partials, people like to do 90% partials for like irons and stuff instead of using loft. But I'm somebody who likes to use loft, de-loft, draw, fade, and angle of attack, which is what people call spin. It's the right stick shot shaping. The further down you go, the more spin you get. The further up you go, the less spin you have. And I use all that, all these to cover my gaps in my bag. As we can see, I have this lob wedge pitch. This goes all the way down to 54. Guess what's at 54 in my bag? Oh, look, 55 is a pitching wedge flop. So I don't need to use a pitching wedge flop ever in my game. So that's my benefit to using it. It's a play style preference. But let me teach you what is happening under the hood of the game when we partial. As I showed you before. Um, it shifted it to the left. So what happens if we go more extreme? I'm going to pull back. Let's try to go to about 70. Right? We pull back to 70 and let's hit our normal tempo. Ooh, pretty bad pass, right? Pass again. Weird swing plane too. very fast so why is my tempo so freaking bad right now right you're, you're like you, you get confused right most people say when they partial i hit so many very fast it's almost impossible especially when we get down to like these these really short chips where we're doing like four yard chips and you have 50 percent it's just almost guaranteed that you're going to be fast. So why is it that our normal tempo is now very fast? Well, I showed you earlier how the pulling points shift to left. The further down you go, the more they shift. Let's let's hit 80 percent, right? In my normal tempo, well, it's it's fast. Maybe that would have been a slow on a normal shot. But as you can see, it's a lot closer. And I'm more consistent, as you can see. But it's very clearly shifted at least a little bit to the left. The pulling points I talked about earlier are shifting further and further the lower percentage we go. You won't notice it too much if you partial 95% shots. Like the, the tempo barely shot, shifted. As we saw in my demonstration, 98% almost had no effect. It just made my perfect in the middle to the left slightly and it was still in the perfect zone so you won't notice it at high percentages but it becomes noticeable once you start getting to like 80 70 definitely 60 and it feels like it's almost impossible to not hit a fast when you get down to 50 percent on a chip so what do we do about this well you have a few options one is to know you will fast and compensate for it um it works on chips it works perfectly fine on chips doing it this way. And I know a lot of people who are on the partials accepting that they will hit a fast and compensating for it. They will aim if they're if they're righty, they will aim over here and hit the fast. But for flops, pitches, splashes, you lose so much distance if you very fast, especially on splashes. Um. So what do we do? You can do another, you could do a technique, which is intentionally slow down your upswing. 
you can achieve this either by maybe pulling halfway back so your swing is much slower. But the tempo can still be a little wonky. But it'll be slightly more controlled if you do it this way and your swing plane might improve as well. But it's not my favorite technique to pull like halfway down the stick. It will slow down your power because you can't push forward as fast, but it can be tricky to to perfect. Um, you can just practice swing in general and just play a slow, like figure it out. Figure out how much you need to slow. Oh, that was fast. Okay, let me let me change it up. Okay. There we go. That's better. That's about the tempo I need to do. That's generally what I do. I don't do too badly. Like once in a while I mess up a chip. Um, but it's caused me to stay away from the splash in this game and instead flop or um chip out of bunkers because it is so difficult to get that that power and the timing window is a lot smaller. So, I've had to figure something out. So, here it is. Here is a method that works for all platforms. This is something everybody can implement. This method, in general, is better for platforms with lower polling rates. So, for Xbox, if you are struggling with your short game hitting perfects, or anywhere close to perfect, I definitely recommend this. Because of how limited the tempo is on Xbox, shifting them makes it very, very difficult to not hit a black tempo. So here's how you do it. Let's say you want this 10 yard chip, right? It's 67% power. We can, we can deduce that just from watching, right? We figure out our vibration and we look how far we're pulling back. And we just hit it and see how we do it. Okay, we don't care too much about tempo right now. All we're doing is trying to find the power. Look at your body. Look to see where your body is. So if I hit 70%, right? That's 11 yards. And if I hit, let's say 64%, that's 8 yards. So you have a bit of a window, right? You want to hit 10. You might hit maybe the higher end of 8 or 11 on when you normally chip. So let's look exactly how far we're pulling back, which is around like mid-thigh. Maybe slightly lower than mid thigh. I'm using vibration to feel this out, but you can do the same thing without vibration. And we check for the percentage by pulling back, pulling back and testing with practice swings. Memorize it. And now to get rid of those pesky pulling points shifting. Let's do something special. We pull back to here. And we start practice swinging. 77% power, not that good, but look at that tempo. 75% power, we're getting closer. Ooh, a nice perfect 77% again. So I need to go a little quicker. 68%, that's really good. That's about where we want it. And you just keep practice swinging until you feel comfortable. But the main benefit of this method is that you keep the tempo as if you were hitting a 100% shot. And that's why I suggest you do this if you're on something like Xbox or you just struggle at slowing down your swing in general. Is you do this method. You find the power. And then you hit your normal tempo. And it will be a lot better for you in the long run. This is just so good if you can't slow down your swing in some method. Or if you just see wild fluctuations in tempo at lower percentages. Finally, swing path compensation. Remember... Swing path matters a lot in this game. I showed that in my swing path video. I'll link it that as well. But basically any major shift in 
swing plane will force it sideways. So let's 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 just hit something, right? Look, I slowed it and it went left. I slowed it and it went left because the swing plane matters much more in this game than in the last game, especially on these short chips. Swing plane matters a ton. Funny enough, putting it doesn't matter, but on these chips, it seems to matter quite a lot. Again, we slowed it. It went super far left. I would mem I would learn to compensate for your swing path. If you tend to pull it, go one way. If you tend to push it, go the other. Start to learn how far each one goes, whether you pull it back and, and test it with like this, or you know, you're somebody who does these longer ones and Figure it out. Which side do you miss on more and play for that side? This will help you chip in a few more times. Even a four yard chip, if you um, miss it just very slightly, is going to go way to one side. So let's... As you saw, it was starting to trail off to the right. Yep, there we go. Pretty hard trail off, so like a cup or two distance worth, even on the shortest of chips. A little bit to the, to the right there with our right shank and our slow. Let's see if we can get a fast. Yeah, as you can see, our fast and our push kind of canceled out at short range. So at these shorter ranges, even that, that is technically a pull because the angle is slightly pointing outwards, even though it's still in the white. So that was technically a pull, and it went left. So there you have it. Learn how your short game is affected by pushes and pulls. Learn this method. It might be the get your savior for your short game. You can go into practice. You can go to chipping practice. You could press circle. And you can find a nice bunker to practice in. I don't like how it defaults you. But once you don't when once you're done with your first shot, it'll go wherever you want it to go. So let's go over here. Let's practice as if we're using this green. We're gonna try to hit a splash. And instead of partialing, we're just gonna hit it some percentage. And use our regular tempo. Hit that a little fast. I could feel myself rushing. Again, it's being annoying. So we'll just do this. This is hard to master. But you will get it. You will get it down. Better. As we can see, pretty straight, and I got the distance. So there you have it. There we go. I hope this helps you in your game, this video. Whether or not you use the first technique, even if that isn't something you want to do with pulling back to 98%, this partial on your chip splashes, etc. might be useful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me any questions or comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you all so much. And I am sorry about the length of my videos. I will try to make more condensed guides in the future. But I'm an insane person who likes to make very in-depth videos to provide plenty of content. Anyways, this is Carrot Cakes. Signing off. Love you guys. Mean it. Peace out. As always. See you soon.